Since I got my hands on the Steam Deck, I really haven't been reaching for my Nintendo Switch all that much. And there's a couple of different reasons for this, but the number one reason is that the Switch just isn't as comfortable in portable mode as the Steam Deck is. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of the Nintendo Switch. Hell, I did a podcast about the Nintendo Switch for five years. And uh, it, it just so happens that when I was playing my Nintendo Switch 90% of the time, I was playing with it docked using the Pro Controller because that was the most comfortable way to play. I never really was taking advantage of the portable factor of the Nintendo Switch, at least not as often as I'd like. With technology, there's always, always, always trade-offs that you're going to have to deal with. And for the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo decided to favor portability over comfort. Luckily, the Joy-Cons are interchangeable, so you can get replacement Joy-Cons that best fit the way that you want to play. When Nixie asked me which ones I wanted to test out, I immediately said the clear ones. I love transparent electronics. There's something so Nintendo about being able to see into the guts of the system. Maybe that's taking me back to when I used to see the transparent GBAs. And even the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller has a almost transparent shell on the outside. I just think it's so cool. When they first arrived, the first thing that I noticed about them was that they had some extra extra buttons on the back. There's a, a T button, which is a turbo button. I'll talk about the functions of that in just a second. There's an M button, which allows you to press that in conjunction with one of the other buttons on the controller and assign that to the third button that's on the back, which is the back paddle. So they have extra back paddles. So let's say you're playing a first person shooter and you wanna be able to reload or jump without taking your thumb off the right stick you can do that. The turbo toggle is actually fairly impressive. You can set it to any button on the controller and it gives you lots of options. Option one, no turbo at all. Option two, turbo when you hold the button down. And option three is just, you don't even have to push the button anymore. It's just constantly firing as fast as it can. And speaking of how fast it fires, you can actually control how fast those inputs are sent, either five times per second, uh, 12 times per second or 20 times per second. And I think that that's really cool. Pairing Joy-Cons with a Nintendo Switch is always really easy. You just slap it on the side and you're all set. These work exactly the same, only when you put them on the side, they light up. And then you can use the turbo button to change the color of the LED. You can have both be the same color or you can have them be different colors. By using that turbo button and clicking the joystick, you can cycle through all the different color modes. I've got mine set to a rainbow on both sides because I think that they look really cool. There are a few things that I would change about the controllers, but none of these things are deal breakers. Number one, they don't support Amiibo and they don't have a camera in the bottom. Would I change that if I could? Sure. If it increased the price of the controllers? Probably not. I really don't use Amiibo all that much in spite of the fact that I have a bunch of them and that camera is just wasted money on me. I've never used it outside of like five minutes with Labo. The D-pad's not as clicky as I would like, which is surprising because all of the other buttons on this thing are super clicky and satisfying. The D-pad, in contrast, feels kind of mushy and it's a little disappointing. I feel like if you were playing, I don't know, like Mortal Kombat and you had to like do forward forward something, you might miss that second forward input uh, just because it feels so mushy and there's not enough tactile feedback. Now, when I selected the Joy-Cons that I wanted, I picked the transparent ones based on how good they looked, but I didn't think about how does transparent plastic feel. And these ones are extremely glossy, but it also is that way because you can see through them very, very well. If they had a matte finish, they wouldn't look as good, but they would feel a little bit better. Like I said, not a huge deal breaker. You could of course put a skin on them, but then you're covering up really cool looking controllers. So why would you do that? Out of the box, the rumble is a little bit too loud, but then I found out that you can adjust the intensity of the haptic feedback, which is very, very cool. I think there's five different levels of haptic feedback that you can step through so you get exactly what you want. All of the buttons outside the D-pad feel super clicky and satisfying. And one thing that I really like is the um, the triggers. The, the Nintendo Switch, for some reason, I don't understand why Nintendo did this, but for some reason they decided to go with digital triggers instead of analog triggers. And a lot of third-party manufacturers 
they use analog triggers, I'm assuming because they already have those parts and it's easy for them to just throw analog triggers in into those controllers, even though it doesn't really do anything on the Nintendo Switch. These are also digital triggers. And because they're digital triggers, they're either off or on. And that means you don't have to have all that extra travel. So when you go to pull the trigger, it's very, very short throw for that trigger. Now, at the beginning of this review, I said that I spend most of the time playing my Nintendo Switch dock. Thanks to the Nixie controllers, I will probably be playing my Nintendo Switch in portable mode more often than I did before, but I'll still play it docked. So how do the Nixie controllers work with it when it's docked? They work really well. They support gyro and I don't know why it is, I don't know what the reason is, but there's a, a lot of third party controllers out there and none of them seem to be able to wake the Nintendo Switch from the third party controller unless it's like hooked up to the Switch itself. Well, these are wireless and so you can wake the Switch with these controllers, which is an outlier for third party uh, controllers on the Nintendo Switch. So overall, I am a fan of the Nixie controllers. They make the Switch far more comfortable like the Steam Deck, which is awesome because even though I think that the Steam Deck is fantastic, We've got some first party Nintendo titles that are coming at the end of this year and next year that I absolutely want to play. And being able to play them portably, yes, I could play them portably before, but being able to play them portably and comfortably is going to be fantastic. So what do you guys think? What are your favorite gaming accessories that you've picked up recently? Let me know in the comment section down below or at me on Twitter. And thanks for watching. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.